Hey, it's James Fathers Rights and Resources, hashtag how I got custody. So if you want to fight for yourself or your kids or your case, your cause, your divorce, your property, maintain your empire, your money, your business, um, you know, whatever, you have to have your mentality right. If your mentality's off, you're going to be screwed the whole way. Your mentality, let's talk about the mentality of a father. A couple guys I've been talking to the past couple weeks. They start from a standpoint in their mindset. I have to worry about what the judge thinks, what the cops might say, what the principal of the school might say, what the doctor might say, what the evaluator might say, what the guardian Latin wants might say. You need to start with the mentality that you're a human being with value and of great importance to your kids and your kids need you. The end. Starting point. The, that's the end of the starting point. So if you have that, if you have your mind made up, the children need you. You're of great value to the children and you have rights. Then, so if you have that mentality from the jump, then you're going to realize some automatic stuff. I had a guy who told me, well, I was telling him a lot of this stuff is common sense. He goes, no, this is, you know, you have a mentality and you're a genius or you're smart. I said, no, dude, this is common sense. If you're a father, children need you. If you have a parenting deficiency, they still need you. If you make mistakes, they still need you. They shouldn't be cut off from your life unless you're a child molester or you drive drunk with them or you beat the snot out of them. Outside of that, almost everything else can be worked on. But you got to have that mentality, that presumption, that default position that I'm of value. If you have the mentality of a slave and you think, now that I'm in family court, you know, all these sick, twisted subhuman piece of garbage perverts get to lord over my life. I got to get permission from the judge. I got to get permission from the, the parenting evaluator, the psych evaluator, the guardian ad litem. All these sociopaths, all these social workers who don't know you from Adam are jumping into your life, total strangers. And if you, if you think about your value, it doesn't matter whether you're in the middle of a court case or dealing with a judge or dealing with a neighbor up the street. And if you know who you are and your position in the kid's life, you would look at these people like, how dare you have the audacity to try and take my kids away from me and trying to deprive the kids of a father. If you understand your value and their basic life needs, you'll be able to come up with arguments on your own without my help. That you're starving the children of a father of a basic life need. I have to come up with that because most of my gender is a bunch of pussy ass little bitches and a bunch of sissy cowards. That's why I keep saying this over and over and over again so that people will realize their fearful, cowardly mentality only comes with somebody who's a punk-ass bitch coward and is scared to act like the father of their kids. If you know that these kids are my kids and I own them and own the rights to them and I get to control them, like the you don't even know, need to know Troxel versus Granville. You wouldn't inherently know that. Then if your kids go and stay the night at a neighbor's house, Let's say your daughter stays the night at her friend's house and her brother tries to touch your daughter or, or, beat, or there's violence over there or the dad, the, the, your friend's, your daughter's friend's dad where she had the slumber party is a violent drunk. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. Can I tell you that my daughter won't stay the night anymore? You know who you are and your place in the child's life and you will say, my daughter's never coming over there again. Or you touch her again, or you just call the cops, or you do something about it, and you put your foot down. But when we go to family court, we turn into a bunch of punk-ass bitch-made slaves. Oh my God, what will master say? My baby's mom is my master. The judge is my master. The guardian litem is my master. I have to... I'm assumed to be a bad parent just because the mother alleged, oh my God, the mother alleged I'm a bad parent. So now I got to go to court and prove that I'm a good parent. No, dumbass, it's presumed that you are. If you know who you are. Now I was talking to a guy and the mother's been withholding the child for months and he has weekends. 
And I'm like, why don't you just go to the school and pick them up early? Oh, two wrongs don't make a right. Oh, I can't do that because that will look bad to the police and stuff. If you know who you are and know that you're the father of the kids, oh, I don't want a confrontation with the school. What you don't want to do is get out of your comfort zone because you're such a pussy. You think that the child abuse, your kids are being abused if they're being withheld from you. They are led to believe that you abandon them. The mother's brainwashing them. How dare you sell your kids out and say, I don't want to go pick up my kids and take my kids on my time because there might be a confrontation. And I'm uncomfortable with that confrontation. So I will let my children get abused by the mother. What the F is wrong with your dumb ass? If you know who you are, you would say, I'm going to get my kids. They're my kids. The school can't take my kids. A lot of you dumbasses out there think the children are owned by the school. Let's pretend that you're married and the marriage is intact and there's no conflict. And you go to the school and the school says, we're used to the mom picking up your kids. We refuse to release the kids to you. You would be outraged and pissed. Why? Because when you're not fighting with the mother, then you feel like a real man. And then you have the confidence to say, who the hell do you think you are not letting me pick up my own kids? Here's an example. I, but, but when the mother says you can't do it, or the mother's going to call the cops and falsely accuse. See, if you know who you are and you're in the right and somebody falsely accuses you, you don't give a shit because you're not a pussy ass bitch because you know I'm the father of these kids. If somebody falsely reports me, I don't give a shit because I'm their father. If you know who you are and you have your mentality right, they got to do something about it or prove that I committed a crime. A lot of you guys automatically think it's a crime if you act like the father of your kid and you keep your kid when there's no court order and there's nothing to enforce. That's stupid. And then when I tell you, you want to argue on behalf of a slave master like a bitch. Oh, but they'll say this, but they'll sell that. The clerk at the courthouse told me this, and the janitor told me this, and the mailman told me this, and my son's uncle's barber's cousin's sister told me this. You are, you have such, oh my God, a Stockholm syndrome with your captors that you bow down and worship them like a brain mind slave little bitch. There's, I keep saying this stuff and people don't like it, but it is what it is. Change your mindset. The Constitution is on your side. Troxel versus Granville says that it's presumed that you act in the best interest of the children if you're a fit parent. If you haven't been found to be unfit, we all know in criminal court that you're, pre you're presumed innocent to proven guilty. It's the same way in any, any other court. If you're, if you're a doctor being sued for malpractice, they don't assume that you committed it and you've got to prove you didn't. The other side has to prove that you committed malpractice. We're such freaking dumbass, retarded, moronic, brainless, ballless, punk ass bitch made fruity gay boys that we say oh my god they accuse me of something now i must bow down and surrender my kids and i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna get 50 witnesses and i'm gonna wait for a year while the mother withholds the child and i'll prove at trial that i'm a good guy and there's no findings of the court anywhere nobody said that you're a child molester you're dangerous you're all that you're just you're just scared now like little bitch because the mom said something you know, Harriet Tubman said she could free a lot of slaves if she could convince more people that they are slaves. There are people who lived on the plantation and they're comfortable with it. That's all they knew. And so when other slaves ran away and they never saw them again and they're like, damn, they're free or whatever. But, you know, I'm kind of comfortable with this and I, I don't I don't know what's out there. So this this is working. So you're comfortable in your comfort zone. And if anything. If you don't want to fight for your kids because of the discomfort, a confrontation with the school, a confrontation with the lawyer, a confrontation with the mom, then you're a bitch-ass coward who is a sellout to your own kids. And the only person in the world who could rescue your kids from an alienated mother and a corrupt court system is you. And you quit on your kids like a bitch. But if you know who you are, you'd walk into court. How dare they do this? Now, here's an example I use. If you and your baby's mom or your, or your girlfriend have a car in both of your names and somebody steals it, or no, she gets mad at you one night and she calls the cops and reports it stolen because you got the car. When the cops pull you over, what do you say? It's my car. It's in both of our names. Guys, automatically say, I wouldn't give up my car. But with your kids, you'll give them up like a little bitch. So when it comes to your property, you're cool. But you turn into a bitch when it comes to your kids.
Change your mentality and stop that stupid shit and grow some balls and be a...